up. <laughs> Boom. Shoo. We're back. Laid out show. This week, we have another special guest, Justin, the great bomber, Newell, Leeds own. Oh, well, what's going on, man? Yes, good. How are you guys? All right? We are good. We are good. So, do you want to give people a background? You know, who you are, where you're from, how you've old you are, and we're going to get already. into it. Yeah, <laughs> Justin, the great bomber, Newell, uh, from Leeds, um, 11 and 0 as a professional fighter, professional boxer, and I don't know what else is there, really. Yeah, we'll get into it from you there. So, have, yeah. when did you when did you pick up boxing? I was fifteen year old when I started boxing. I um, I originally, when I was a lot younger, I think I was about seven or eight. I started with karate. Um, got to like black belt stage, won many competitions, and growing up, I just thought I wanted something a little bit more full contact, something a little bit tougher, um, and then done the transition over into boxing when I was 15. Mm-hmm. I remember the day like like it's still yesterday. I remember like me and my friend we were talking about it. Should we go down to the gym? Um, and we both had bikes at the time, you know, when you're kid, you'd always yeah, get yeah, yeah, yeah. bikes, not more bikes, but <laughs> yeah, pedal yeah. bikes, whatever yeah. else. And um, we rode down to the, the gym down at Rick Manor's gym and walked through them doors and now you are yeah. Yeah, yeah, now here I am. And it's like he, um, he come for one or two sessions, did my friend and I stuck at it and here I am now. So picking it up at 15 is actually, it's fairly late that, I guess. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, because like you say, kids nowadays, they're getting into it. My little boy is six. Um, he's been doing it since he was three years old. Yeah. You know, I, I do a little bit of pads with him at home and whatever else and he, he trains down at Allianz in Crossgates um, by Sam Smith and the coaches down there. Um, they're doing a good job with him, so it's good. But yeah, he's six year old, so fifteen is a little bit late, but I think he But you must have took to it bit. fast, you know, yeah. eleven and uh how's yeah. that been getting up to eleven and uh what's that like? Many ups, many downs, yeah, uh, many highs, many lows. Um probably more lows than highs. But you know, we're on the right track and we're pushing on for success in twenty twenty. That's it. So mm. you have a fight coming up before the end of the year. How many? Last fight of the year. Last fight of the say, year. Unless there's a phone call and you know <laughs> someone drops out and we take the fight, we're here. That's it. So, how many rounds is that? And then, can you you know give us a, an insight into what twenty twenty is? What marks maybe planning for you for? Yeah. For 2020? So next fight is on Sunday the fifteenth of December, Ellen Road, the Pavilion Suites. Tickets available. Get in touch. I'm um, just dropping that in there. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, crack yeah on. that's in it. You mm-hmm. see a lot of people dropping the plugs and this and that. So. Yeah. But yeah, so Sunday the 15th of December, next fight, it'll be a six-rounder. Um, not sure of the opponent yet. I'll leave that up to my team, obviously. Mark, my manager, and Keith, my trainer. I'm sure there'll be in discussions about who. Um, and then, in my own mind, in 2020, I want to start pushing on now for titles. You know, I'm 30 years old. I dedicate myself to the sport. I'm training all the time. I train twice a day. And I'd like to go for a central area, push on for an English. Um, and just see what happens. You know, this boxing game, you can never predict the future. Mm. You never know what's going to happen, do you? Mm. So, no. saying that in life in general, you know, you could go out of here now and get you by a bus who knows I know, especially not. there's a lot of tragic thing happening um, in the world lately so you just got to take one day at a time but yeah. always push on for success so alright this is a question I didn't really mention but uh, because of your age do you feel like will you just take if someone picks up the phone now <coughs> short notice fights titles big fights yes that, 100%, that's the, that's 100%. The, don't care who as it long, is no hmm. as long as it makes business sense as well um, then yeah me as a fighter personally a lot of fighters will just they'll fight anyone because that's this is the sport what we're in and, and that's how we are in his mind you know what I mean with fighters and everybody will say yeah I'll fight him I'll fight him but logically you have to have a good team behind you to, to guide you and say it may be the right fight it may not be or we'd advise you to do this or we'd advise you to do that and in Matt Bates and my manager I believe I've got a, a good guy there who's going to do that as well but from my point then then yeah, time's not on my side and I'm always training, I'm always in shape 
and I'm ready to go. So if the phone does ring, we're ready. Mm. So, yeah, exciting, man. So off the mic, you were giving a bit of an update that kind of your career had like a, a gap. Can you actually give us a tiny bit of detail on that? Yeah. Just to, just for people's uh, mind that is listening that maybe don't know too much about you. Like yeah, you've got a strong record, but you're 30 years old. Like yeah. started at 15. How did that even, how did it happen? Do you want to paint that The big breaks people? in between was <laughs> when I first started out, obviously it was to win fights, go on holidays with the lads, enjoy myself, just young, mm-hmm. young and dumb and whatever else I'm stupid, you know <laughs> just living life and growing up and I remember I, I used to like like you say I'd box and then I'd take a month a month and a half out of the gym yeah yeah go out on the bulls with the lads and enjoy life and live it up a little bit and then I'd get back into training it'd take me two and a half three months to get fit and then maybe box again and then obviously I've for some of you listening I uh, obviously I went to gym mm. you know what I mean I spent um, quite some time out of obviously the sport with that um, for a drug related offence and to be honest and I've said it before it was the best thing that ever happened to me now people like to go what I say no it was because I wish it, uh, wish it would have happened sooner rather than later um, because now I'm more focused determined mm-hmm. um, the mindset's right and I've I've got a goal where I want to be and what I want to achieve and and that's the path I'm on and that's what I'm chasing. Yeah, do you know what? I've noticed that you run a lot with Ishmael and he, we had him on the podcast and it was a, the same thing. Hmm. It's like it wouldn't that changed his mindset. You've got to live and learn and down. you've got to make these mistakes and if you're correcting your mistakes, you're on the right track. Exactly. Boom, that's yeah, it. they're not defining moments at all, are they? Just exactly. part of the journey. Part of yeah, the journey, just part just of that part growth. Part of growing up, it is. Yeah, man. So, boom, big things expected for 2020. So, we look forward to that. Uh, we're going to get into the you know, the second part of the show now. So, um, I start off with the one that's just been... I got myself, I got kind of caught up in it. I actually found myself wanting to know who won the KSI Logan Paul fight. I didn't watch yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch <laughs> it. So, <laughs> fucking, that's one thing to note. But I did, when I woke up this morning, I, I, did, had, a quick, I, did, I had a quick search... Right, well, let me stop you there. <laughs> Who are these guys? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Right. They fucking sucked me in, man. <laughs> KSI, Logan Paul. Yeah, so it's been a big thing going on. And I tell you the truth, I don't know about them. Hmm. I know, obviously, the YouTubers, but what do they do? And then people are saying, oh, well, they just sit there and they get angry with themselves or they get angry at the TV. I, I don't know. Hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not really into all that YouTube thing, you know. But, listen, they've earned some serious money, yeah. But I believe so anyway. And yeah. I've got some serious followers, and mm-hmm. if that them followers can transition over into the sport, then it's going to be better for boxing. Whether it does or it don't, I don't know. Do you know what? You beat me to the question, man. I was going to ask you is it good or bad for boxing? I would, I no, think I don't think anybody knows at this moment in time. Like, you've got people talking about all the numbers and the subscribers, and it's going to bring money into the sport, in it. But are they going to do it again? Mm. And all I see now is. Other celebrities calling celebrities out. Like, yeah, oh, let's yeah. fight so and so. Let so and so fight him, and and now you've got more probably YouTubers calling each other out to get on this platform. So I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Bit of a weird one that one, isn't it? Really? What's your thoughts on it? I've not really. We haven't really spoke about it. Do I think it's good for the sport? I think yeah and no. I don't know. I think it's the side that I find unfair to it is you know there's people fucking real boxers out there putting in work because yeah. we've kind of seen the the politics behind it behind how hard it is to get fights and all of that and then these people coming on the on the ring and making shit loads of money and bringing limelight to the sport which is fair enough fine but yeah. I'm here and here about it 50-50 mixed emotions yeah mixed emotions it about is it hard because like you say the, the, there's fighters out there like like myself like we're always on the struggle on trying to get to the top mm. And then these guys just walk in and they've got mega. Do you know no boxing them. background really, right? It's they've what? been training a few years. That was the you thing know, as well. They they're not really. dedicated their life to that shit, really. You know, it's nah. it, they've dedicated they've months, really, like mm. you know, six months or whatever. But the problem is, they were doing interviews. Case I did an interview, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I, I think I can beat pros now." And every even Eddie Hearn was like. Yeah. Shut See, I think that would probably be more worth watching one of those motherfuckers in a ring with an actual pro. 
Yeah, you yeah you've said it go. now, so let let's see. Yeah. But then on the other hand, you have to respect them because anybody who gets through them ropes, it takes a lot of bottle. People don't yeah, see true. it like if if you're not a fighter or you've never been in that situation, you'll never know what it feels like. You know the build up to the fight, the nerves, the ring walk. You know it's um, mentally you have to be mentally tough as well. But for the, these guys, I don't know what their motive is. That obviously they're just getting in there to. I don't know, prove a point to each other and whoever's following them on YouTube, I suppose. Yeah, do you know, because it can't be money, I don't think, because they they made enough money. Mm. So maybe they're doing it, you know, for something extra to see if they can do it or... But yeah, get them, let's... Yeah, let's that's another thing. Bang them in there with a pro, man. <laughs> Imagine how much money they earned off that fight last night. I don't know, I don't know if the purses will come out or... But then you've got fighters like, like myself or other up-and-coming prospects... And they're on peanuts, mm. you know. And it's like these guys walk into the sport, they've got all the hype behind them, and they get paid. It'll have been a lot of money. Yeah, that's what I kind of feel sad about. An example is Darren Tetley. We had him on the on the on the podcast, yeah. and he was saying that he couldn't find a fight. He had the belt, um, W E uh, welterweight European Championship, and couldn't find a fight for it because of. I remember watching that. Fight trying to make a match. Was it? Um, Mason Carvey, did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Josh Ooh. Warrington. Big yeah, ass cut on his lip. lip. Yeah, what a fight that was. Mm. Um, we were there ringside um, and it was a great fight as well. Yeah, but it's it's one of the, like, the more we sit and talk to like guys like yourself, all the, you know, all the, a lot of the Leeds lads, to be fair, Darren, you've got two full-time jobs, you lad. Mm. You're selling tickets full-time and then you're training as well. And you got, you, you know, you have to sponsorship and, and most boxers are actually pe- working as well on their side, you know, like yeah, some Darren people is. Are, and, and Josh Josh Sandlin, he was saying he's he was working he's working full time just about to go into ultimate boxer. So people don't really see that. They don't really, they definitely don't appreciate it. It's hard and, and some people say like, Oh, how many days a week do you train or how many times do you train in a day? And I just feel like saying twenty four seven. But they won't understand because if you're not if you're not training, you're thinking about food. Mm. But you got to eat clean, you've got to eat healthy, you know put the right fuel in and if you're not thinking about that you might be thinking about opponents you're not thinking about opponents you're thinking about your next training session mm. if you're not thinking about that you're thinking about it's got, it, it will involve boxing or around boxing you know it is it is full time yeah absolutely so let's talk about some proper boxers now so Billy Joe Saunders he was on the undercard won by knockout so now they're, they're saying alright Saunders either fight Callum Smith big fight Anfield, that'd be pre- I'd probably want to go to that to be fair, I think it'd be sick. Um, or Triple G, I'm not too bothered, I think. Triple no. G's a bit. If I'm honest, I think it beats Triple G easy. I, I agree. And Triple G, like I like him, he's a great fighter, he's um, been dominant for many years, but lately has he been on the slip or on the slide? Um, is it an age thing? Like no one knows, but his last couple of performances haven't been what it was when he was first on the rise. Mm, okay. Um, and I think with Billy Joe, his slickness and his movement and his footwork, I think, I think it'd probably end bad for Grofkin. Yeah. If I'm honest. I agree. And people might might look into this and say, "Nah, Grofkin, he can punch and this," but styles make fights. Yeah. And stylist, stylistically, I think Billy's wrong for Grofkin. Yeah, big time. So, on from that, Triple G, Canelo won the week gone, gone by, stopped Kovalev. Pretty, a lot have been said about it, but take it for what it is, it is a pretty big win for weight world champion. Uh, what do you want to see from Canelo next? Do you want to see him fight someone like a Saunders at his natural weight? Or, that this got thrown around the line, and I, was, I, was, I mentioned it to Jermaine at Boxing yesterday, Andre Ward comes out of retirement he's said, and takes he's on said, no, takes on Canelo. It. He's, he's so it. much money. That he's never had a big payday. I think he'd be well. I think he'd be tempted. I don't know that. I think he's a clever person. Or he's a clever man, and I don't think he'll just come out of retirement for it. He's got nothing to prove. I think when he was in the sport, he proved everything that that he had to prove, and yeah. he done everything, and he fought everyone that he had to fight. And I don't see it making sense for it. Obviously, money wise, then yeah, it probably will because there'll be a lot, a lot of money involved. But I don't know. Timing, you know, how old is he? You know, he's. Ward must yeah. be nearly 40. 
Yeah, obviously I was a lot younger, mm. um, but you don't need that, you know. Unless you needed the money and you needed a big payday, then yeah. If well, they did, if they did, who wins? Very interesting. Is that like a vid? Yeah, I don't mm. know. You know what? I'm gonna go with Ward. Yeah. Ward. Hart wants. I want. I would not. I would hate for him to come out of retirement and lose. That would be fucking Question terrible. Question for you guys. What do you think to Canelo and the drug chief in? It's a very good point, you know. People have forgot about that, really, haven't they? Yeah, yeah people... Do you it's know like what? it just gets brushed people, under the carpet. People skip over it a lot. Uh, the thing with, like, Dillian White and, like, they, they haven't forgot about it. <clears> and they don't know what's going on yet. No one knows what's going on yet, but he has actually been classed as a drug chief. Yeah, and he got for call for it. He got literally yeah, nothing for it. A little slap on the wrist. That's a, you know that's that's boxing's biggest problem. If you if you are a cash cow, people don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's why it is. I think people don't similar. care. Pacquiao went. But up you know what? UFC is kind of similar as well, isn't it? It's but they they cut your ass out if you get caught. If you're beat John Jones, he was. Well, yeah, yeah. John Jones. Like, right, actually, it's just it's just a little. It's a gram. It's a little gram. It's, it's not going to do anything. All right, okay, okay. But yeah, Canelo. But then he blamed it on like some fucking Mexican some meat, dodgy meat. <laughs> some dodgy Mexican steak. Yeah. But now everyone's just like, oh, Canelo's up at like everywhere. It must have been on the uh, Mexican steaks <laughs> for the, for the last month. It must have been eating a lot of that Mexican steaks. Right. Be, uh... Yeah. It's. Do you know what? It's it's kind of. It's awful that it's just gone and. But in any forgotten. of us, every other sport, it's a ban, right? You're, you're ban. tainted, your name is gone. Mm. You're a drug, drug abuser in the in the sport. You're done. That's it. But in boxing, yeah, like you say, if you're a cash cow, it's the peds in it. You know what I mean? It's performance enhancing drugs. That mm. obviously, I think my personal view or personal opinion: if you get caught taking peds, then you should be banned from the sport. For life, simple, yeah. done. No. Simple. I think you know it's. I, mean? I think that made people definitely think twice about doing it. As opposed to, a uh, little six this month. A true athlete, and you're true to yourself. You shouldn't even think about it. Mm. It should be not horrible if I take it. I'll get a lifetime ban. It shouldn't cross your mind to take it in the first place. You know the sport's dangerous enough as it is, without people trying to get one up on you or be that slight. Just in front of you, mm. you know, performance wise, and yeah, I think it's wrong. Yes, you know, one hundred percent. Especially for you've got to be in there, and I think I would hate to think that to know that some opponents, is, you know, is, is juiced up and they can go twenty four rounds if they really needed to. Like they just yeah, it's wrong. Juiced, no, to it's their, wrong. It's juiced up to their eyes. It's yeah, it's a scary thought. Yeah, especially with what's going on in boxing lately as well. It's just it's been you know the last couple of months have been tragic with obviously people passing away and things like that yeah. and then you look at situations where people are trying to enhance the performance to be better than you are to have more power to be stronger you know it's everything needs to be on equal playing fields doesn't it yeah and you know what the big thing I realised was when Mayweather wouldn't fight Pacquiao for ages and it, it really all boiled down to Mayweather wanted Pacquiao to take regular blood tests and then he agreed to it and then he got smashed. Mm. And I was like, all right, people actually know all this shit's going on. Mayweather knew. And he was like, I'm not fighting unless you're fucking clean. And he fights him clean and... It's hard as well history. because for the <clears throat> boxing commissions, thing like that, I think it costs a lot of money for the, obviously the testing to happen. Mm. Um, but something does need to be done about it. Like say, strict rules, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, and like I say, in my opinion, if you get caught taking peds, then 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 you should be banned. For banned for life. For it, yeah. yeah. Do you know this guy? This actually well, it's a touch, it, it's a touchy subject as well. It is. Do you know what we've asked people on and off mic about it, and but everyone's very the the answers are the same. Mm. Like yeah, ban them, ban them for life and. You know, it's, it's really hard to... What did Papa Sean say about it? He made a very good Sean point. Sean was fucking ruthless, my money. He said, um, what was it? If, if your doctor was taking... Is that what he said? If if you went to like a practitioner or something and they're doing drugs and in there... Um, like, for example, if the doctor was fucking smashing drugs, he'd be banned, he'd lose his license. Oh, like, no, he was out on Dominic Ingle, wasn't he? Yeah. He was like, oh, even, you know, trainers shouldn't be on it. <laughs> he was no, fucking... He was have funny, a dig at someone. Yeah, he said there'd be some licenses left in uh, Sheffield, so right, that was pretty right. funny. But this is a good, this is a decent way to bridge into it. So we've um, 
AJ Ruiz, the reason why they fought is because Miller decided to take every steroid he could fucking get his hands on. They said that he didn't even fail by a bit. He failed by fucking loads. Yeah, like, it wasn't even three close. Different tests, wasn't it? Three so, different tests, loads of different substances. He was on every steroid. They might as well have done a, anything and a report on what he wasn't taking. It would have been short. It would have been easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, AJ fights Ruiz. We all know what happened. AJ Ruiz 2 is coming up. How do you see it panning out? We've asked pretty much everyone on the show and everyone's kind of... Everyone's giving us different answers, mm. haven't they? It's a tough Must one, be- isn't it? Because, listen, we all want AJ to, to win. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's been great for the sport and he's brought the sport on like tenfold, you know what I mean? Just because of who he is and obviously what he's done, he has, he has brought the sport on. Um, and obviously he's British as well, so we're backing our man. But if you look at the first fight, can he do it? You know, that's that's the question. Um, Ruiz got in there and brought him into a bit of a fight, really. You'd expect someone like Joshua Long Levers um, to keep it long. And obviously Ruiz will short to get inside and try put it on him. I don't know. It's, uh, but if I give you a fiver, where does your money go? Joshua on the rematch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm going to go for Joshua on the rematch. I really want him to win. Yes, I am. Because it's like, as well now, like, you can see, like, I follow him on social media, things like that, and it, everything's, like, shut off behind closed doors. So he must be really focusing on, on the job at hand and, and, you know, concentrating and training away. Mm. Might be the best thing that happened to his career. You're looking at him five years Everyone time. doubting him. And he just goes and fucking walks through everyone. Either way, it's going to be a very tough fight, though. <laughs> Ruiz is looking sharp and ready for that. Yeah, and that's the thing as well. For a, for a guy the size of Ruiz as well, obviously he's a big guy, you know, he's mm. a heavyweight, but he's got some speed, some serious speed mm. there. Um, and could that give him problems again? You know, yeah, of course it will, but I just thought Joshua can add up. It's different because once you get in there, and this is this is for anything like you can always have a plan, but when you get in them ropes and you get smacked in mouth, <laughs> the plan can go out the window. You know, especially in smaller gloves, mm. because obviously you're sparring bigger gloves, things like that. But when you get in there and obviously I box in eight ounce gloves, and and you get clipped with them or you get tagged or or you take a full blown shot, you know, you can feel the difference. I was just about to say for people that are that are listening and watching, that. Don't know what that feels like to be sparring in like 12, 14 ounce gloves to then drop down to eight. How big is that difference? The massive, massive difference. And like you say, you can talk about it all day, but you'll never know until you experience it yourself. There's no point even going into it. <laughs> you say, oh, it feels like this or it feels like that. But yeah, it feels like you've been hit by a bus. Yeah. Um, it depends as well, obviously, if you might be fighting, if they're a power puncher or not. But yeah, no, you can definitely tell the difference. Yeah. A big difference. Yeah. Second question off the back of this. So uh, for your weight, are you you quite a long fighter? Are you like tall? Are you like long long I'm, arms? I'm, yeah, Depends I've got or... long arms come quite tall as well. Um I've got long levers, but I can mix it up, I can box, I can punch, I can get in close, you know. In my mind or I do like to have a little bit of a fight and <laughs> get in there and have a war, but I can box, I can punch stylistically anything you know you just got to like say when you're in there it's about adapting yeah being smart being clever so i was gonna what i was gonna ask is how dangerous is it if a fighter like a shorter man actually can get inside you and start getting on the inside of your jab how is that a dangerous time for for tall fighters how do you how do you uh, mitigate like how do you how do you address that in the ring tie them up yeah it's it's, it's, it's it's tough in it because <clears throat> every fight's different and every situation is different and if obviously the short guy he will always be wanting to get close to you and put it on you so it depends what tactics they've worked on in, during the camp yeah um, but yeah it's always you'd always think that the taller guy will use his his long arms and his long levers and the shorter guy will want to get in get on his chest and, and rough him up yeah boom well, now for the second part of the show Who's your top three pound for pound fighter, dead or alive? It's like you put me on the spot now. <laughs> There's so many what you could choose from. Um, you've got your great Sugar Ray Leonard, mm. Marvin Agler, 
going way way back Rocky Marciano um, I don't know pound for pound greats no help me out guys what have you what have you well, we, had- we had Carl Zaggy didn't we you said Carl Zaggy did you say Carl Zaggy when we was off mic at the off mic mentioned him yeah do you know what we've not even done this question we, no, we might as well flip it now who's your top three of all time yeah my number one is Mayweather Mayweather I just think it's like if I was a boxer, I would I would not want to get punched. So that's how I'd want to fight. Simple as that. Mm. Um, who else? For me, Roy Jones. Roy sick. Jones is number one. So for me. sick to watch on yeah. YouTube highlights. He wins. It depends <laughs> yes. as well what what you what you like because it, yeah. if you like to see someone who's a who's a boxer very skillful, yeah, Floyd Mayweather. Let's go for that. Mm. So. You'd say Floyd Mayweather is your number one because he's a very skillful fighter, mm-hmm. um, and he beat everyone put in front of him. Um, you can't take that away from him. Um, but then if you if you like to see a fight, then you're gonna mm-hmm. choose someone who's a who's a fighter. You know, I remember when I was growing up, I used to watch a lot of Ricky Hatton because at the time I was growing up and getting into the sport, he was still fighting regular, and you know he liked to come forward and mm-hmm. and have a fight, a bit of a war. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, number one, yeah, I said Roy Jones. Number two, Iron Mike. Mm-hmm. Um, number three, I'd probably say Lemachenko for me. Yeah, at the sick. moment. Yeah. So out of them, yeah, yeah I'm looking. Bit of mix. Bit of everything. Yeah, Mike Tyson. And then, like I said, currently, obviously Loma. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Um, if you could watch any boxer again, dead or alive, live. Any one boxer who would it be for one night? Mm-hmm. There's a few. Like, it's a matchups in it. What you what? Do you know what they're saying? Matchups. You can take a yeah, fight. If you can go see. You get a ringside front row seat. There's so many. You can say, all right, then Mike Tyson versus, I don't know, Anthony Joshua. Oh, you shit. know, <laughs> like, like I don't know. And you're talking the heavyweights, and then let's say, all right, the super middleweights. I would like to see. Carl Zaggy versus Carl Froch. Uh, them two fucking hate each other as well, don't they? I don't know. I don't know if they've got any history. I yeah, do they? Like... <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Froch don't really hold back, does he, when he's talking? And, like, <laughs> no. Carl Zaggy, when he um, retired, like he just disappeared. I don't think he really stayed in the sport. Um, he just went off into the sunset and he's enjoying life. Um, Froch has obviously been in the limelight a few times. Um, but I'd like to see that fight. I'd like to see that because you've got the, the heart, the determination, and the grit of obviously Carl Froch, and you've got the speed and the skills of Carl Zaggy. So, yeah, I'd make a good lineup. That'd be a fun fight. In, interesting fight, stylistically, again. Yeah, Everyone. defo. Last question If you could lay out any celebrity, who would it be? <laughs> Thinking. Thinking time. Thinking time. I don't know where yours. What's yours? I might have, that's a so I put you on the spot now. Anyone from Love Island, I, I said. Yes. You know what? I don't mind Love Island. Yes. No, no, not for me, man. No. No. Yes. It shouts at the TV when it's on. You won't watch it. Well, no, I'm not allowed in this house, man. Fucking <laughs> out. I will go for Jeremy Kyle. We'll Jeremy. Jeremy Kyle, yeah. You know what? He, he's funny when you watch him sometimes, but he's always digging out and having a pick at them and then. Then when you see it on the TV and the, the big bouncer comes, you know, <laughs> you look at the big bouncer and you think, mm. but no. yeah, no, Jeremy Kyle. Do you I know what? I like that. Whatever. Strong answer. Jezzy. I like that a lot. Jezzy, yeah. <laughs> Jezzy. You know what? A few people obviously say, oh, you've got the look of Jezzy because I've got the grey hairs as well. So <laughs> oh, no, definitely going to change Jezzy. <laughs> Take that. Smash Jezzy. Boom. Um, if people want to get tickets for the fight, are they still available? Yeah, tickets are still available. Um, contact myself DM me on um, Instagram justin.newell1989 Facebook get in contact with me and also I'd like to say thank you to my sponsors as well um, which is Hessian Cafe in Oakwood Marigold's Cleaning Company based in Edinburgh um, Fast Phone Fix in Halton and Alkalize Water Boom Boom Justin, thanks again for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. First time on the show. No, I enjoyed it, man. Thank you. Good. Boom.